Welcome back to Universe Sandbox Squared. It has been a while since I last played this game, but I wanted to come back to it because they updated the game once again. If I go to the main menu here, that's not the correct menu. Here's the correct menu. As you can see down below, we're now in version Alpha 19 X2. Now, there is something I need to mention about this update. This is not an official update to Universe Sandbox Squared. This is more of a preview of the Alpha 19 update. According to the developers, the actual Alpha 19 update is not going to be out for another few weeks. However, they did recently release a preview version that you can download by, uh, you know, opting into uh, the beta again. So, it, it's just like uh, when I played Simple Play-Ins a few weeks ago, when I was playing the uh, 1.4 update, I actually wasn't playing the official version of the update, I was playing more of a beta version of it, because it wasn't officially released yet. But I could still check out, like, a beta version of the update before it came out, and it's pretty much the same situation with Universe Sandbox Squared. So, this is the Alpha 19 preview, and by the way, that's what the X2 means. The X2 means it's an experimental version. So as you can see right here, Alpha 19 X2 is an experimental Universe Sandbox version. Click to learn how to switch back to the latest version. So once again, I'll, I'll show you guys how you can download uh, the preview version of Alpha 19 uh, at the end of the video. So, I wanted to check out the preview version because this version does add some new features into the game. It adds a whole bunch of simulations, but simulations weren't the only thing that were added in this update. Most of these simulations uh, were created to demonstrate some of the new features that this update brings. And one of the new features is Roche Limit Physics. Now, what exactly is that? Well... I'll have to explain what the Roche Limit is first. So, to put it in simple terms, the Roche Limit is the distance at which a small celestial body starts getting torn apart by a larger celestial body's tidal forces. So basically, if a small body like the Moon, for instance, gets too close to a larger body like the Earth, it'll start disintegrating. But even if the smaller body is not within the larger body's Roche limit, it can still be affected by tidal forces, and it'll experience a phenomenon known as tidal heating, in which the tidal forces actually cause the temperature of the smaller body to increase. So this right here is a simulation demonstrating Roche limit physics on the Earth and the Moon. Now I do have the simulation paused here, but I'm going to start uh, speeding it up here. A little bit. I need to speed it up uh, quite a bit in order for you to actually notice the effect. But the moon's gonna start moving here, and as you can see, it starts heating up. It starts heating up exponentially, and it starts to disintegrate. So as you can see, you have particles flying off the moon now, and also just particles randomly bouncing up and down on the moon. But yeah, so the moon is starting to get torn apart by Earth's tidal forces, and... This is usually how uh, rings are created, like, it can produce a glowing ring most of the time, but it seems like, at the moment, most of the particles are just crashing into Earth, some of them are orbiting around it, and as it's disintegrating, its mass will start to decrease until eventually there's nothing left of the moon. As you can see, its radius is decreasing as well, so this just, keep, this just continues on until there's basically nothing left of the moon. There's also another simulation here called Earth and Eccentric Moon, so you got a bit more, uh, larger, a little bit of a larger orbit here, so when the moon comes closer to Earth, then it'll start to heat up, and it heats up very quickly as well. I'm not sure if that's how, how it actually works, like, in, in reality, but yeah, so as it comes towards Earth, it gets burned up and it starts falling apart. The Roche limit also affects bodies that are in binary orbits. So for instance, I have two moons that are basically the same size. This is uh, another simulation that comes with this update. This wasn't one I created. But if I unpause the simulation, eventually, as you can see, they start they start disintegrating. So they just have particles bouncing off of each other, and the effect gets gets more intense as time goes on, to the point where they they start glowing. It gets so hot that they start glowing. There you go. Look at all the particles now, for goodness sakes. Except the particles aren't aren't really flying anywhere. It looks pretty it looks pretty nice to stare at though. It's still pretty beautiful though. It's still pretty beautiful. Although it kinda kinda just lags the game a little bit. And wow, okay. I can glitch the camera in, inside the moon. Okay. That's that's apparently what the inside of the moon looks like. Alright, there you go, confirmed. We actually what the heck is going on now? Uh okay. 
What is what is this effect right here? Are are the moons turning into black holes? What is going on? What in the world is this effect? Okay. That that looks really strange. There's also another simulation that is basically the same thing, but this time with two binary Earths orbiting around each other. And well, there go the oceans. Every everyone just just died on on both planets, I think. So yeah, they're both they're both burning up. Almost looks like they're having a battle here. They're having they're having a battle of uh, of the tidal forces. And actually, wait a second, the water's coming back. The water comes back for a little while, and then it goes away when when the the planet starts having like a dance party again. What? Okay, that is that is really strange. <laughs> is that how it works in reality? I have I have no idea. Now, the reason- oh geez, are they getting closer? I thought- I thought they were for a second. Oh, they are, actually. Now, the reason this happens is usually because one side of the planet is experiencing a much stronger gravitational force than the other side, which causes the planet to stretch and causes it to get obliterated, basically. So that's- that's basically what the Roche Limit is. The Roche Limit also affects stars orbiting around black holes. So this is a simulation that I created right here. I put some stars around a black hole that is 10 million times the mass of the sun, and as you can see, they are all getting annihilated, especially the one that's that's the closest to it. And even if the smaller object is not within the larger object's Roche limit, it can still experience tidal heating, like what's going on right here. As you can see, it's still heating up, even though it's not falling apart, so... The tidal forces are still are still active even outside the Roche limit. So that's pretty much all there is to say about the new Roche limit physics and tidal heating mechanics. But that's not the only thing that's new in this update. They also made improvements to the explode power. So now when you explode an object, it creates a shock wave which can destroy other objects surrounding it. So for instance, I can uh, unpause this right here and I'm going to set the auto velocity to on. I can just explode this planet right here. And there we go! We have like an actual explosion animation now. And okay, I didn't mean to explode that planet as well, but sure, why the heck not? <laughs> yeah, so... There's now like an actual uh, animation. Now for some reason, when you destroy the planet, the game still thinks that the planet is there and moving, even though it really isn't. So you can actually still get planets to like orbit, orbit around it somehow. And as you can see, it's actually being affected by the orbits of the other planets, and even its Roche limit. I'm not sure why the heck it does that exactly, but I think that's definitely uh, something that, that needs to be changed. Also, I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. <laughs> what am I doing, for goodness sakes? I'm just placing planets around. Okay, well in that case, how about how about we, we, we cause some destruction here? Cause a whole bunch of planets right here, and how about we just explode them? Explode that one, and explode that one, and there you go. There you go. Just destroy everything. Destroy everything. And I believe the size of the explosion depends on the size of the planet. So... I can just put a bunch of gas giants down right here and explode those. And kaboom. There we go. There's a massive explosion. So yeah, it does affect the other planets. It heats them up and also causes them to disintegrate. So there we go. It's just throwing particles all over the place. Just caused some nice destruction right here. Now I'm actually curious about something. Are the objects like the pool balls and teapots and all the other, like, human-made objects affected by the Roche Limit as well? I'm actually very curious <laughs> as to whether or not they are. So, I created a pool ball right here that has a radius of 200,000 kilometers and a teapot with a radius of 30,000. The teapot is orbiting around uh, the pool ball. Is it also affected by the Roche Limit? I, I need to see this. Are you kidding me? It is? What? What? The teapot- oh my god, guys. The teapot is orbiting around the pool ball. It's actually being affected by it. It's disintegrating. The teapot is dis is disintegrating right now, and it's heating up. <laughs> okay. Well, that is- that is bizarre, but that's still pretty cool, though. So even if there was, like, a, a planet-sized pool ball in space, I put a teapot around it, the teapot would actually disintegrate. Well, that is interesting. That is very interesting, to say the least. And here's the inside. Apparently, there's there's nothing inside the pool ball. It's it's just a void. All right. And how about we just we just blow up the <laughs> blow up the the pool ball right now and get destroyed? Oh goodness gracious! Okay. Um. I think I broke the simulation, guys. I think that was too big of an explosion. Yeah. <laughs> the entire simulation just froze. 
Um, oh, oh, okay. It's, it's going really slow here. Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness me. Oh. Okay. Is, are, are we good now? <laughs> are we good? That didn't destroy the pool ball, by the way. What? Or did I destroy the teapot accidentally? No, I don't think I blew up the teapot. But whatever, let's blow up the teapot anyway. Oh, okay, so it seems like if you try blowing up the man-made objects, it doesn't do anything. Like, it still causes an explosion, but it's like, it doesn't destroy the object. Okay. Yeah, because I'm clicking on... I'm clicking on the, uh, the pool ball now, and it's not, it's not doing anything. But, uh, I mean, the, I think the teapot is still there, though. Or, or is it? Is it, or is the teapot gone now? Is that... Uh, oh, okay, I don't even, I don't even know what's happening anymore. Well, I can still click on the pool ball. Okay, hang on a second. Let me, let me try this again here, because I want to, I want to test this out. Yeah, okay, it's, it's not even, it's not doing anything anymore. Okay. Well... <laughs> I don't, I don't even know what the heck just happened, but here, just, just launch some, some basketballs at it. There we go. Just get those, get those basketballs right here. How about I, how about I just launch the earth at it? Boom. There we go. Hey, wait, put it, put it closer. Earth probably will be affected by its Roche limit as well. Probably. Okay, I didn't want the earth to collide with the other one. Look, the, is the pool ball, is, is the pool ball gonna affect earth as well? I need to, I need to see this here. I really need to see this, because this is, this is just weird. This is just really bizarre. There we go. Earth's gonna get destroyed by, by a pool ball, guys. That, that's gonna be our downfall. The pool, the pool balls are gonna destroy us. What? Wait a second. It just phased right through the pool ball. What? Okay. Is it, is it because the pool ball technically doesn't exist anymore because I blew it up? What? Okay, I don't know what's happening anymore. Yep, it just went right through the pool ball, guys, and came out the other side. There's the earth right there. It- it went- it entered the pool ball and exited the other side. I don't- I don't even know what to say about this. I just- I just really don't. <laughs> oh, this- this is weird. I still love this game, by the way. The reason I love this game is because you can do crazy things like this, for goodness sakes. Do crazy things like this, like creating- creating pool ball planets for goodness sakes, and just throw basketballs into space and make them collide with Earth. It's it's amazing. This game's incredible. I love it. Yep, the dice block is orbiting around it now, and it's it's disintegrating, guys. It's, it's, <laughs> its radius is going down, and wow, this is just, I don't even know what to say about this, other than the fact that this is just, this is just absolutely amazing. This is just absolutely incredible. Just incredible. Okay, how about I try just putting, like, a, a, a random moon right here? Or maybe even a, a random exoplanet? Yeah, okay, here we go. How about, what if, what if I just do this? Even the planet? Will, will the planet get affected by it? Uh, no, the pool ball's getting affected by it. Uh, okay, why is... I, okay, I don't understand. Why is the pool ball getting affected by it? Okay, actually, no. Well, yeah, the pool ball's getting affected by it, but also the planet was... Okay, the planet just collided with the, with the, with the dice, or the, the pool ball, I mean. Okay. Well, this is just bizarre. This is just really bizarre, guys. I don't even know what to say about this, other than the fact that this is just, this is just amazing. This is why I love this game. Oh, oh, okay. And I guess the dice block just exploded now. And also, the pool ball. <laughs> I guess it got too big or something, I don't even know what the heck happened. I guess it just, it just collapsed on itself. Alright, well, anyway guys, I think that's going to be it for this video. That was all I really wanted to show. I do know that there are some, some other things that I, that I haven't shown off here. Because I think there are some other things. Yeah, there's like a, there's like a new model for the uh, third stage of uh, Apollo 12 now, I believe. And there's also a uh, police box, which I'm not really sure what that is, but hang on a second. How about I just pause it very quickly and just to see what it is. Oh, wait. The police box, is, is this the... Oh. <laughs> is this the TARDIS from Doctor Who? I think, I think it might be. Wow, actually. Look at this, for goodness sakes. Yeah, there we go. Just right in front of these, these two planets right here. Just right in front of them. Just, just orbiting. Just, just watching. I, I, I don't even know what this is anymore. Yeah, then there's the model for the third stage of the Apollo 12 rocket, and then there's the New Horizons probe. So I think these are all, like, like, new, uh, new models, I believe. 
And I think they also added like a, a simulation quality setting, but I don't really I don't really care about that. Yeah, there's just these random random objects floating in space in front of these these binary earths that are that are essentially destroying themselves. But uh, yeah, here here just have a just have a whole bunch of, of, of weird things now. Yeah, dude, put some pool balls right here. Yep, put a whole bunch of random pool balls all over the place. Put some put some baseballs maybe. I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. I just I just don't know what this is. Here, put a baseball right there. Okay. And then unpause the simulation just to see what that does. What the heck? Okay. Yep, I think I broke the simulation for real. Alright. I don't even know what the heck happened there. It didn't affect the binary Earths, though. Okay, so while these Earths are dancing in unison right here, and also getting obliterated in unison, I might as well uh, show you guys how to uh, download the Alpha 19 preview now. So once again, you just uh, click on Properties by right-clicking on Universe Sandbox Squared in your Steam library, and then you go to Betas, and the beta that you want to opt into here is called Alpha 19 Preview. And something I forgot to mention a, a while back, like pretty much ever since I... Uh, first uh, played this game on my channel, is that you can actually opt into many betas. You can actually download older versions of this game by opting into uh, different betas. So you can go all the way back to, I think, the Alpha 7 update, which came out before Universe Sandbox Squared was even available on Steam, I believe. I'm not sure if I'll ever make a video checking out the older versions of the game. I don't think I will. They're probably not all that special, honestly. So maybe I'll just check them out in my spare time. But yeah, so in order to download the Alpha 19 Preview, guys, just opt into the Alpha 19 Preview Beta, and it should immediately start downloading it. So that's how you get into the uh, Alpha 19 Preview. Anyway, this is where I'm going to end things off for now. So this is still a pretty cool update. Got Roche Limit Physics and Tidal Heating, new explosions, and some, some new uh, objects and whatnot. And I also found out that apparently if you... What the heck just happened there? Okay. Also, apparently we found out that if you create... Uh, a uh, planet-sized pool ball and have a teapot orbit around it, uh, it causes the teapot to, uh, get destroyed. I don't know how that works, but it just, it just does somehow. This game is, is so cool. <laughs> it really is. Anyway, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next video I make. Later!